drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hello and welcome to edupedia world welcome to sap ui5 training session in this session we're going to see how the controller behaves and what are the events inside this controller so we'll take an example which we have already done so we'll close all yeah when we talk about index.html in this index.html we are calling a json view and then we are displaying it so we'll try to refresh this page yeah once we refresh it is got a press me event so we'll see when the controller is called so in this network when we refresh you can see first this is nothing but index.html then after this index.html sap.ui.core is called and then a mobile platform because we have taken the mobile library that's the reason library.preload will be telling you later about this these are the files which will be loaded from the resources the library css and everything so for each control has some library that will be in this library only so ux themes related library will be here and the gold reflection libraries will be here and then gold reflection only and there's a layout themes with gold reflection and it's ui commons themes with gold reflection this is sap.m with gold reflection and this is sap ui core themes with gold reflection libraries are loaded the first is loaded is view then view will be calling this controller so this is how the controller is called so in this we'll see first we have called the view so we'll go to the json view and the controller so when we call this controller it will come here and first whatever it is the first on in it will be triggered so we'll type console dot log and on in it you can try like this or on in it function So we have to end with a semicolon. The after on in it, the next will be on before rendering. Next will be on before rendering. Rendering is called. So once it will come to the view, then view it will call the controller. When first it is called, the on in it function is called first then on before rendering so on before rendering is called just before on after rendering so not before the first rendering on it is used for that once so this like these are nothing but life cycle events the next is on after rendering so this is on after and when we exit this function is only uh, called when the controller is destroyed so if you want to handle anything you can handle it here so every controller has four life cycle events the first life cycle event is on and it and the next life cycle event is on before rendering and the next life cycle event is on after rendering and next is on exit so when on init call is every time the view calls for the controller that is for the first time very first time when the view calls that time the controller will be coming and it will be coming into on init first it will come on init then the view will not be rendered till still now so first it will call to the controller it will be here only the content is next the content is next so when we call the controller name the controller will go there 
and displays this and on before rendering also will be displayed and then the view will be displayed this types and everything will be displayed and then it will come to on after rendering so view will be displayed somewhere here so on after rendering on before rendering after rendering the call when the view has been rendered so it's a html part of the document so whatever you want to handle it you can handle it here after displaying that control if you want to handle anything you can handle it on after rendering and when the view is destroyed that time you can call to on exit so we'll see how this is working now so we'll create this refreshed it we have place it in the console right so we'll be seeing in the console see first on init is triggered then on before rendering is triggered and on after rendering this is how it is triggered so what i wanted to do is now i want to take a js view and put a breakpoints and we'll tell you so i'll refresh this yeah, hello JS view. This is a JS view. So we'll go to sources. So in this sources, we have a controller. So I'll put a breakpoint everywhere on before rendering. So when it's called, yeah, on exit also. But on exit is called when we destroy the controller. But really, we use. So here we return and we create a content here. Okay, we got this. So now we'll see how it is called first when we refresh the page first it will come to view view then the controller is called now now the cursor the program came into this view and in this get controller name so if we didn't come to any other function we have come into this and then we have to then this is coming creating the view right so it will come to create view it will take a button and then button button logic whatever it is there and it will be coming to on in it and then after on in it it will go to on before rendering on before rendering it will be creating on after rendering now the view will be displayed and then you can handle the events so once we click on this refresh to go to the next breakpoint f8 you can press now f10 is for single F10, yeah, it will go to the view.js. Yeah, next breakpoint. So we will see the network. Okay. First is there, it went into the controller actually. It called the controller. And then the controller. See the network. Control is already called. So on it is done. Now the on before rendering, and then on after rendering, and times. See, whatever I'll tell you. The logic in on before rendering will not get IDs. So if you want to create, say there is a text, you dynamically you are displaying it. So you can handle it in on after rendering on after rendering you can handle it so like that so here on in it rendering you will get the ids and everything you are stuck once the data is loaded that time so if you can't find the ids in on in it but definitely you will find it in on after rendering sometimes in few cases you will not find it before rendering and on in it so you can find it in on after rendering so like that you have to handle it so these are the life cycle books they call it as this is called only once it's called only once when the controller is called when you move to one view to other view other view to another view that time the controller if you initiate any controller newly then only this events will be triggered if not no only once this is called so these are the on in it, on before, on after, and on exit. See how this lifecycle hooks are 
handle is the fired when the view is first instantiated. When the view is called first, at that time the controller will be in be called that is on in it. So the name is fixed on its camel case on I capital in it fired when the view is first instantiated. Next on before rendering. So it is fired before the view is rendered. View rendering is the view. See what need to be displayed in the view. It will be taking first. If it is button or shell or any control, it will take first. And when it is rendered before that, it, this event will be recorded. After this rendering will be done. And then once the view is rendered, then this on after rendering is fired. The event is fired when it has been rendered. The HTML is injected into this document. So HTML page will be converted. Whatever you do, finally it will be HTML page only. So XML, JSON, JavaScript, any view you do, at the end of the day, it will be HTML only. And then on exit, it will be calling fired event, which is when you destroy this control, means it will be removing this control at that time on exit will be called. So when we see this, when you see HTML page, so everything is in HTML only, whatever you write. So it will be directly giving to this controller. Okay. This is what the button is. So when we refresh this, first it comes to the controller. We'll go to the elements. Okay. So now the view is rendered. Yeah. We'll see the content. So first view. And then on before rendering, on after rendering, and this. So this all everything is HTML only. See hello JavaScript. The JavaScript code, whatever you have written, that will be converted to HTML only at the end of the day. So it will be converted to HTML. How it is converted to HTML is we have written a piece of code here, content. So whatever you do it, you are placing it here that this division will be play, converted to HTML page. So that is the importance of HTML in SAP R5. So whatever you do, it will be at the end of the day converted. Now we'll coming to the control. The declaration of this control is always SAP UI controller. So here it is an ID. This is an ID. You have to use it whenever you want to link the view to this particular controller. So here it is SAP UI5 app 2.1st. So there is a reason you give ID first and then you'll be opening this in this you'll be giving on in it on after rendering. So whatever the events are there, it always good to start with on in it. Then you can finish the lifecycle events. Then you can place the private functions. So always two functions are separated by a comma and that's nothing but an object. So the functions are written like this function name and it will be typed function and see this doesn't have any O event. So it is a lifecycle event, it's not required. When we have a button or any press event, it's always good to have this O event and I've placed an alert inside that. This is how the first view and controller. So we'll see the controller. So this is how the lifecycle events have been triggered once and see whenever it is like this. It's always remember it is a JS file. The controller cannot be in XML, controller cannot be in HTML, controller cannot be in JSON, any other way. It will be only JS because you have to write the logic in controller. You're controlling views models etc from controller only your controlling application so you can have like this say hello alert you have done it so this is what controller is and then you can write separate functions by adding some do something like this you can add you can write the functions yeah like this you can write so it is always do if you don't do this see there is no 
see you check some validation right it is valid because it is not a function see it has when you go here you'll see multiple markers at this line syntax error on a token it, it is checking the proper syntax so when you say semicolon no it says token is expected but it is this so it gives you an idea so do something will be writing anything so you can have do something method inside this and you can yeah see you cannot finish so when you do this that's the reason it's always better to have see see insert this so it gives you an answer also what need to be done so this is done in controller so whatever you want to you want to pass some data from view to the model so the middle will be controller itself the controller will do all the operations which is necessary for the application so an application needs some data need to be fetched from the odata model or json model then the controller will do the job for you so this is what the controller is in the next session we'll be discussing o model so in mvc we have covered views and controllers how view and controller will act we have seen it now we'll be seeing modeling we'll see that in the next session thank you for watching edupedia world stay tuned for more videos